If you were wondering if the IQ Nexus from Corsair is a great way to change the RGB lighting on your Corsair gaming PC, uh, the quick answer to that is yes. This device does a couple of really cool things, including changing your lighting link settings. Uh, you can change to endless amounts of profiles that gives you control over all sorts of different stuff. It will do uh, text hotkeys, it'll remap keystrokes, remap mouse buttons. You can do some macros with uh, you know keyboard and mouse. Uh, you can change profiles on the fly. You can launch an application, text remaps, and things of that nature. With all of the included widgets, you can monitor a wide range of different performance components like uh, CPU load and temperature, uh, all your fan speeds, things like that. You can assign those to a button on a screen and you can monitor those in real time. With that said, there's a couple of little things that we're going to go over in this video that I really think Corsair missed. Uh, there's some definite improvements uh, that could be done here that I really think could just be done with a firmware and some software updates in IQ. Now these are all really kind of minor gripes and I'm gonna cover most of them here in this video. So at 100 bucks, is it worth you running out and buying it to switch your RGB lighting? That probably not in most cases. It is really cool and convenient, but again, we're gonna get into some of the limitations of this. Now, talking about RGB lighting control, there are other ways to do this. Obviously, you can use the software. Uh, you know, you can map uh, profile changes to your keyboard. The IQ Nexus really isn't a necessary device. So the panel itself just has a very, very short USB cable on here. There's a couple of uses for this. And it comes with a base uh, station, which is what I'm using it for, which is just kind of a you know a little weighted base. And that has like a, I think a four and a half foot cable that will connect into your PC. And then the little short dongle connects into the base station. It comes with three different keyboard mounts and it allows you to uh, basically stick it directly on a couple of different Corsair keyboards. So in order to get the IQ Nexus up and going, it's really simple. You basically, it's one USB cable, plug it anywhere into your computer and uh, IQ should just recognize it. It will just show up as the IQ Nexus. So from here, you can go ahead and just click on the tile. There are a number of pre-built in screens for this and they are going to vary based on whatever hardware you have. And you can see across the bottom here, you get you know one, two, three, four, five. You can switch to these and it's gonna show you the different built in screens that are here. And then some of the screens will have this little button out here or it might be somewhere else here. And if it has a plus sign on it, you can manually configure it. So we'll come over here to number four and here's the Commander Core XT, one of our favorite controllers on the channel. But anyways, you're gonna have a number of pre-built-in screens depending on what hardware you have. Corsair's got a lot of hardware out there that I don't have connected up to here. So I would expect you are going to have some various uh, other screens and various other abilities. Uh, I did notice that the Lighting Node Pro and the Lighting Node Core did not have their own uh, screens uh, pre-configured. So to change screens, there's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, the easiest way is just to slide left or right and you can switch back and forth. So let me demonstrate the lighting link function here real quick and then we'll talk about this button in brief. So this is one of the best ways to go through and change the lighting just quickly on the fly. And if you change the lighting link button, it just applies to all of the devices, keyboard, mouse, and you know all the fans and all my pumps and everything in this case. And so what's really cool about it is it does show you what lighting link you're on. In this case, it's uh, watercolor. And so if we just keep clicking it, it's just going to keep cycling through here. Spiral rainbow, rainbow wave, rainbow. But what I can't do is I can't move these buttons around. And this particular lighting link button here is really cool in the fact that it labels the lighting link that you're on. So it lists it underneath there. Seems very simple, right? But you can't recreate this button on a custom screen. The way that I've worked around it a little bit is by using the profile switching button. Now this requires some work on your part. So if you go profile switch, what you can do to create a profile in IQ, I'm not gonna give you a complete tutorial on it, but it's not that hard. Uh, basically, you're just going to click the plus sign, create a new profile, so we'll just call it Hardware Artisan. You can change the background images and you know link apps and things to it, but we'll just create that. And then basically what you gotta do while you're on Hardware Artisan is just go set all of your lighting elements the way that you want and your fan profile. So you would have to do both of them at the same time. And then of course you can create a bunch of folders and put all sorts of lighting profiles underneath there. 
And so that's one way I've gotten around these buttons not being here. So I've just created a bunch of different profiles. In your profile switching button, you can just come list out what profiles you want it to be, whether that be a single profile or multiple profiles to cycle through. So let's go ahead and go over really quick, just a manual setup here. So from the manual setup button over to the left, you just wanna click the plus sign here. And you can of course change the screen name. You can choose a background image. And again, you can choose GIFs and all sorts of stuff here, but we'll kind of zoom out and you're gonna just move it around and kind of resize it. And once you're done and satisfied with it, click done. And of course, you just got some quick color selection buttons here and you can you know, choose some custom colors if you wanna do that. But once you have that done, go ahead and create the screen. For the sake of our demonstration, let's go ahead and just remove this uh, background graphic so that we can see it. But let's go ahead and remove that graphic and we will just put a simple black background on there. All right, so now that we've got the back background, then we can modify each and every one of these positions here. Just click the plus sign next to it. Now, the very first thing you need to select is, is this going to be a button or a widget? But each button here can be one to six uh, spaces on here. So you can make up just one graph to take up the whole screen if you choose to do so. Let's go ahead and select a widget here. We've got size six and we can come resize that in a minute. We'll click the plus sign next to that and we want to select what item do we want the graph for. Let's go ahead and do CPU load. And so we'll go ahead and click that and you can see that it immediately puts the graph up here across the whole entire screen. From here we can go ahead and change a bunch of the parameters around the type of graph. So we can turn the graph off and we can just use a numerical value here instead of a graph. And we can change the color of the graph so let's go ahead and let's change it to white here. So you can change it to white and you can change the opacity of this if you want so you can kind of make it fade into the back there and you can just get a line. There's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it and just really customize the look. Okay, uh, you can change the, you can turn the text on or off which will just be load and then of course in here we can change it. So let's put CPU uh, load. Of course you can put whatever you want. You can change the font name of this. Gives you some examples here. Now yeah, we'll just change it to something Gotham Bold. Let's put impact on there, but you get the idea. And then you can change the text size. And of course you can change the color of the text. We'll change it to red. That doesn't necessarily look really great, but uh, just to demonstrate it. And then you can change the background of this. So we can change the background of the button itself. And yeah, we'll just put here this really quick hardware artisan. And then we can change the opacity level of that as well. You want some of these looks don't look all that great to me, uh, you know, but we're just really kind of messing around with it. So anyways, we can go ahead and turn off the background, just leave it at that. And then we can come up here and we can continue adding. So I would say most of the time I've ever used it, I've not had a graph this big, uh, you know, maybe two if I like, but let's just go ahead and put it at one. We can go ahead and keep adding buttons to this. So let's add another widget here. So plus, System Info, AMD Ryzen, let's put the CPU temp on here. Now, one thing I've noticed is some of these, it has to kind of scrunch it up. There's not enough room for some of the text names that you put on there. So you could put extra small on there if that's acceptable to you, uh, if you want to see the whole thing. Or of course, you can change the size of it to two and then you can get you know, a much bigger uh, text uh, graphic on there. From here, let's go ahead and add a button. So select button, select your size, whatever you want. And then you can click assignment here. You can select whatever function you want. Of course, we have macro and this has a macro recording uh, function. We're not gonna go into that feature in this video, but you can do that. You can do text, uh, just which means if you hit that button, it's just going to input whatever text string you have over here. Uh, we can also select media which means this is a play, pause, media stop, next track, volume up, down, so on and so forth. Okay, uh, we can launch an app. Basically, you just select that and then you just choose whatever app you want. Uh, there's a couple pre-built-in ones and then of course you can select whatever uh, custom app you want. You just point it to where the executable file is and you're good to go. You have a screen switch function, which just means you can automatically tell it to switch to whatever profile or whatever screen you want to, one of the pre-configured screens or one of your custom screens, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can remap the keyboard. 
which basically just means when you hit the button on the Nexus, it's just going to act as that particular key. Uh, remap the mouse button, which means you can do back button, forward button, scroll up, scroll down, so on and so forth if you want to tie a mouse button to your IQ Nexus. All right, and then we've got remap keystroke, which is something like, you know, control alt or, you know, whatever key combination you might want to put in there. Okay, you can do profile switching, uh, which is exactly what it says. It just changes through all of the different profiles that you have created. And you do get a list when you do that. So let's select that profile switching. And then out here to the right, a couple of options. You can, you can select just a single profile. Uh, which means if you just always want this button to go to this profile, then you're good to go. So I've got some folders over here with all the different uh, colors. I haven't completely filled it out, but let's say we just want this button to be static color red to everything. So we'd go ahead and just select that single profile, and then I could name the, uh, the text to uh, static red, and then it just names that button over there. Of course, again, we can change the font, let's turn it to impact, and we'll make it extra large. Okay, so now we've got a static red button, uh, which basically is just going to switch the profile to static red. Again, we can put a background, we can change the icon on this one, and we can turn the icon on or off if you desire. You can change the color of it. Let's go ahead and put red since it's static red. Then we can change the icon. Now, th these are all the built-in ones uh, that it will let you do. And of course, you could change the background too and just put a, a button if you want. So let's go ahead and uh, select that. We'll do a logo. That one's kind of hard to get sized properly, but you get the idea. So we could do that and then we could turn the, uh, the icon off. Anyways, there's a ton of things you could do with it. So the other thing we could do, let's go ahead and create another button. And let's go ahead and do profile switching again. Okay, but this time we're gonna go profile list. Then you wanna click the plus sign here. So from here you can select a bunch of different profiles. So here let's go under lighting link profiles and I've created quite a few here. You just wanna drag and drop these all over. And then we can apply that. And you get a couple of settings here of which direction you wanna go on the list. You know, left or right, I guess it's just up and down really, and you can loop the list or you can choose to not loop the list depending on what you wanna do. But going back to general, we've got that selected and then we can change the name of this here. And in this case, I'm gonna just call it lighting link. We'll change this back to impact. So now every time you hit that lighting link button, the uh, profile is gonna switch. So I created that button and I'm trying to switch it, but it's not switching. This is another peculiarity about this IQ Nexus that I've noticed. If you have a button that's sitting on a uh, lighting link profile, that overrides any profile that you're on. So what you have to do is you have to come turn this off, but you gotta cycle through it, put it back just so it's off. And then I can go back to this main screen or this one that I just created now you can click the profile switch button, but I can kind of cycle through a whole bunch of different stuff, you know, whatever I've got in the list there. So, but one thing that's frustrating about that is it doesn't list the profile name underneath this button. Why oh why Corsair, can you just, that's like the one whole function of this button. If somebody knows of a way to get it to do that, I might just be an idiot. But if somebody can tell me how to get it to show the profile name there, clearly IQ Nexus can do it because the built-in screens has that ability under both of these buttons. Now let's talk about libraries real quick, uh, going down here. Uh, libraries stores the widgets lists and the buttons library. And you can also get a list of all the different screens. So if you click the list here, it will give you a list of all the screens you have configured, the built-in ones and the custom ones. Now you can reorder them from here, just drag and drop, depending on where you want it in the list. Okay, you can also disable a particular screen or screens if you don't want them to show up. So instead of deleting them, you could just uncheck them here. The buttons library 
If you want to store these buttons to use on another screen, just drag and drop them over here down onto this. Now you can see that in the buttons library, you have these uh, particular buttons that you can then create a new screen. Let's go back to manual setup and go to libraries here and we can just quickly drag these back over. Uh, coming back over to device settings, we get just a couple of basic settings here. Obviously, and these, this is gonna act like just a lot of other Corsair devices, uh, meaning that you can update the firmware, you can check for updates, you can force a firmware update. Uh, you can change the brightness, uh, display timeout. Uh, if you want it to just turn off after X amount of minutes, then you can do that. Uh, the restore device screens is if you happen to delete some of the built-in screens, you can just hit the restore button and it will put them back. You know, for a hundred bucks, you know, I wouldn't run right out and buy it if you're kind of on the fence about it. You know, you might not be blown away by its uh, functionality, but if you really would benefit from just a quick little remote, you know, to go to the lighting link uh, sequences or change your profiles, and there's a whole lot of other use for it that you could probably get creative with all sorts of things in here with the macros and the, you know, the key remapping and things like that. There's probably a ton of ability that we haven't really gone over. Uh, but you know, if you can find this on sale, $49.99, it's a pretty cool little device. And uh, even though probably not for everybody, you know, if you're really just kind of basic with your Corsair RGB lighting use and you're not doing anything too fancy, you don't really care too much, uh, you're probably gonna find it maybe a bit of a waste of time. I say that primarily because when I first got it, um, you know, I kind of had a little higher expectation for it and it just, it didn't completely blow me away. I've kind of warmed up to it and I like it a little bit more than what I initially did. Not that I ever hated it, but it just wasn't quite as useful as I thought it was gonna be, at least for me personally. So anyways, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about this video, as always, let me know. I'm happy to help uh, when I can, the best I can. So that's going to do it for today. Thanks for watching.